In this video, we're going to have a look at what is new in Microsoft's new Excel Expert exam, the MO211. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Being certified in Microsoft Excel allows you to say to your current and new employers, yes, I can do Excel. And it's not just me saying that, it's also Microsoft. The MO201 exam has been around for several years. This is the expert level certification for Microsoft Excel. However, in April 2023, a new version of this exam was launched, the MO211 Microsoft Excel Expert Exam. In this exam, you will be measured on your ability to create customized Excel environments to meet project needs and to enhance productivity. You will be proficient in creating, managing and distributing professional spreadsheets for a variety of specialized purposes and situations. In this version, tasks will no longer be individual tasks in the exam, but comprehensive project-based testing. Now, what more specifically is the MO211 about? Well, if I scroll down, you can see that the skills measured are manage workbook options and settings, manage and format data, create advanced formulas and macros, and manage advanced charts and tables. Compared to the MO201 exam, the waiting for managed workbook options and settings has gone down from 15 to 20%, down to 10 to 15%, and manage and format data has gone up from 20 to 25% to 30 to 35%, a big increase. But what specifically are the skills measured? Well, if you click on download exam skills outline, here you can see all of the individual skills which are being measured. And there aren't that many changes in the MO211 compared to the MO201. If we have a look at the requirements for the MO201 by clicking on the download exam skills outline, first of all, there are three topics which have been removed. Manage comments, configure editing and display languages, and use language specific features. So maybe this is why the manage workbook options and settings has gone down from 15 to 20% down to 10 to 15%. In addition, the requirement to create maps has also been dropped. So what's been added? Well, first of all, we've got generate numeric data by using rand array. So if in this spreadsheet in cell E1, a type equals rand array, open bracket, it asks for the number of rows and columns. So let's say I want three rows and four columns, what the minimum number is. So let's say 10, the maximum number is, let's say 20, and whether you want a decimal or an integer. I'm going to go for integer, which is true, and close the bracket. So with this one function, if I press enter, you can see that we've generated three rows and four columns of numbers between 10 and 20, which are integers. The next function which has been added is the let function. So the let function allows you to take lots of different functions and combine them together in individual stages. So let's have a look and see what the average number of people for Northeast is. So that's rows two, three, four, and eight. Now I can do this with an average if or average ifs function, but let's say I wanted to divide it into the various stages, the sum and the count. So I can say in cell C13 equals let, open bracket. So first of all, I'm going to create a variable just for this one function. So this is going to be count of location. It could be whatever you choose to name it. So there's my function. And I'm going to say that is equal to count if A2 to A11 is equal to northeast. So that's my first variable. My second variable is going to be sum of location. And that is going to be equal to A2 to A11, where it equals northeast. And where it is, it's going to total C2 to C11. So those are my variables defined. Next, I want the calculation. The calculation is going to be sum of location divided by count of location. And I could just use the arrow keys to go down to count of location and press tab and close the bracket. So I've defined two variables and then at the end, I'm using them. So you can see that the average for Northeast is 6,877,000. And if I highlight all of the Northeast figures, you can see that at the bottom as well. 
Another new function which has been added is the X lookup. So just like the V and H lookup, it allows you to look up a single piece of data. However, while the V lookup requires you to define an entire table and say what column you want from it, the X lookup allows you to define two ranges. So let's say I wanted to find out what the number of people for the first occasion of this word Faisabad is. So I'm going to copy Faisabad down here into B15 and in C15 I'm going to say equals X lookup, open bracket, I'm looking up Faisabad, comma, I'm looking it up in B2, comma, B11, comma, and I want to return C2 to C11 and close the bracket. So the great thing about this function is that this second range could be to the left of the first range. There's also some additional functionality, what to return if there's nothing there. So you don't need to use if error, you could just say perhaps not found. And then you've got a match mode, whether it is an exact match or an approximate match. And then is it searching an unordered list or an ordered list, which could be way faster. So now you can see that the first occurrence of Pfizerbad has 8145259 people. The next function is filter data by using filter. So this is an automatic way of filtering your data. So let's say I wanted to filter this range just for Northeast. So I can say equals filter open bracket, and I want to filter A2 to C11, comma, where A2 to A11 is equal to Northeast. And then I can also use a third argument, which says what to return if there are no rows. So I'll say no rows. So that now gives me everything to do with Northeast. And if the data changes, then the function automatically changes. I'll just undo that. The next function is sort data. So again, this is something that you can use on your existing data ranges. So if I say in A22 equals sort by one word, open bracket, give the name of the array. Well, I'm going to use A17 to C20. Now notice it says A17 and then the hash or the pound sign. This is because there's only one formula in A17 and it spills into adjacent cells. So I want to sort this by well, I'm going to sort it by C17 to C20, and I want it to be sorted ascending. And then you can sort by a second column as well, and a third, if you wish. So here is my data range in ascending order. And if I change this one to a minus one, it will sort in descending order. Going further down into manage advanced charts and tables, the requirement to create a map chart has been dropped. And in the create and modified pivot table section, format data has been changed to configure value field settings. So what's the difference? Well, let's say I create a pivot table of A1 to C11. So if I go to insert tables, pivot table from table stroke range and click OK, and I'll drag in location two and number of people. If I click on the drop down in the value section, and go to value field settings, not only can you change the aggregation, what it is summarized by, not only can you change the number format, but there is a second tab, the show values as, which will allow you to create a percentage of a grand column or raw total or some other figure, a difference from, a running total in, and a rank among other things. So I think it's this expanded knowledge that you need for the MO211 exam. So these are the differences between the MO201 and the MO211 exam. Now, if I can help any further, then please consider looking at my Udemy course, where I go through all of the requirements of the MO211 exam. However, if you have not already done the MO210 exam, or if you've not studied for it, then I'll suggest looking at my MO210 course as well as a prerequisite, and then have a look at the MO211 because my MO211 course builds on the information you gain in the MO210 course. There will be a link to these courses in the description to this video. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. If you'd like more information about the MO210 and MO211 exams, then please look at our website, idodata.com, where we've got blog articles about both of these exams.
In our next video, we've got what's new in Microsoft's Excel Specialist exam, the MO210. If you want to see it, please click on that video. If you like this video, then please click the like button and when to subscribe and click that bell. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.